Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here on this Tuesday. Hey, yesterday I was out climbing. I was up on some of the Front Range High Peaks here in Colorado, and this is what it looks like right now. Um, you've got snow uh, pretty much all over the place above tree line, but you're looking out towards the south here across some ridge lines. Uh, a couple of 14ers there in the distance, Grays and Tories, but we got snow from the last storm system. It's pretty obvious here. It was it, it was kind of an unsettled day with these clouds moving in and out, but at times it would turn sunny and it was quite peaceful. Um, but looking down the road, we've got two storm systems in the forecast that could deliver additional snow accumulation, not just to Colorado, but to Utah, Idaho, Montana, Wyoming. Um, and it could be significant as we kind of push down the road towards the middle of October. But uh, a nice day yesterday. Let me take you to radar here. Now, it is totally dry across the west. There is just nothing. Severe clear right now across most of the west. Although, I'll tell you, down here across uh, Denver in the Front Range, we're socked in this morning with cloud cover. Uh, another morning of late darkness. Um this is like the second morning in a row of this. Pretty unusual, but we just we can't seem to scour out these low clouds down here. But on radar, it's totally uh, clear at this point. Let me take you to my uh, bullet points here. Here's what I'm looking at um, in the forecast. So we've got the next storm system already uh, approaching for 10, 10, 11, and 12. That one will be a combination of a front and also drawing in remnant moisture from Hurricane Priscilla. So that'll be a little interesting setup as that happens. And that moisture will affect a lot of the, uh, the west, the four corners especially. And then the second storm system is 1013 to 1015. Now that one is a significant dip in the jet with an area of low pressure. Um, it will be colder than normal, and there's going to be widespread snow potentially down to a number of valley floors with that one. I'll show you the snow forecast is intense. Uh, it has intensified quite a bit since yesterday. Um, here are the best odds for snow, and it's really clear here. There are two distinct storm systems for Colorado, Utah, Wyoming, Montana, um, it's the first one, and then it's you know there's that second one coming in behind it. Now BC, you can see the chances right there. Best odds of snow across a lot of the high peaks. Here's water vapor satellite imagery this morning. So you're looking at moisture, uh, water vapor in the mid levels of the atmosphere. Where you see these oranges and these reds, and even the black colors, that's drier air. Where you see the whites, the blues, and the greens, that's all moisture. That's the key. That's where the action is. There's a lot of dry air here across uh, the west right now. The moisture right now is being shuttled up into parts of BC and Alberta, and you can kind of see the spin up here with an area of low pressure. Now, eventually, this whole pattern or this front will begin to work its way down into the inner mountain west. It's going to break down essentially this area of high pressure. Now, what you can't see, and what I'm going to move it here to show you is there is Priscilla. So that is Hurricane Priscilla right here. There's a little bit of a disturbance right there off to the uh, off to the west of it. And look down here, there's some additional energy starting to gather. <laughs> so it has been incredibly active in, in the Pacific this year. Um, and, and all of these storm systems, a number of them, not all of them, have sort of tracked up towards the Baja, and we've taken the moisture and filtered it and siphoned it in to the west. It's become part of storm systems that have been moving in. It's picked up the moisture, and that's exactly what's going to happen. So Priscilla will kind of take this track, and then even the storm behind it, there's some thinking that it will develop and take a very similar track and get pulled in. So we're going to take extra moisture from both of those and then train it into the flow. Um, let me show you what the forecast radar and satellite are going to look like because this will really give you an idea of how this is going to play out. So we'll start this, uh, this forecast today at about lunchtime. There's not much on the board. Obviously, it is very quiet right now. So let's push into the future. All right, here we are, the evening hours today, some thunderstorms down in New Mexico, southern Colorado maybe gets a dusting over the San Juans. But really, we're waiting. So here's lunchtime on Wednesday. There's dinner time on Wednesday. 
There are the early morning hours on Thursday. Now we start to see a little bit of action. Look at the flow coming up right here. So that's some of that moisture from Priscilla affecting Arizona and Utah. And we're starting to see a little bit of moisture uptick here in uh, Colorado, southwest Colorado and New Mexico. And look over here to the, the west coast. We've already got that front coming in. So the front is helping to turn the winds out of the southwest. And that's why this moisture is getting pulled in from Priscilla. All right, let's move ahead. So again, this is what the, the radar should look like in the future. And where you see the greens and the yellows, that's a more intense area or heavy area of precip. Here's lunchtime on Thursday. Now you can clearly see it, that flow with that moisture from Priscilla, and there's our front in the west. All right, let's go ahead. Here's dinner time, and things really start to pick up here. So this is dinner time on Thursday. Look at all of this precipitation. And you've also got the front coming in at the same time. So there's a lot of precip. And again, some of that's going to be snow at the very highest elevations there. But that's affecting a lot of the four corners. All right, here we are. This is early on Friday. And it is just, I mean, look at this stream of moisture uh, coming in here with the, the remnants of Priscilla. There's our front helping to kind of bend the precip over the top. So again, some of that's going to be snow. But uh, that may actually makes it all, uh, all the way up into parts of Idaho and Wyoming. That's how far north that precipitation makes it. And this is, again, early on Friday, October 10th. So pretty fascinating to, uh, to see that play out. Um, let, me take you, um, let me take you back just briefly here. I want to show you. Let me change over the, uh, the source here and just... Uh, uh, and show you this. So this is the forecast track, the official forecast track from the Hurricane Center of Priscilla. And it's very obvious. It's what we talked about. So your center is down here and all of the forecast models, the spaghetti models, take it all the way up through um, Arizona into the four corners. And it's no wonder, it's no surprise that we're going to feel that moisture. With that kind of a track and that right hand turn, that takes all of that rich Pacific moisture up into the uh, the southwest part of the country. All right, let's look at the middle of the atmosphere up at about 18,000 feet. Um, so you're looking for uh, higher or lower uh, areas of pressure versus the 20 year. And so this is today, 10-7. Uh, there's Priscilla, and you can kind of see here the lowering of pressures off the west coast. Um, otherwise, we've got some higher than normal pressures here sitting. And that's no surprise with all that dry air across a lot of the, uh, the west right now. Let's move ahead. All right, so this is Thursday, the, the 9th of October. Here comes Priscilla. That's going to steer its way up into this area. And look at this big drop in pressures, lower than normal pressures right there off the west coast. So that turns the, those winds out of the southwest, starts to bring in all that extra moisture from Priscilla and overruns some of these higher than normal pressures. All right, final uh, pressure map here. This is for Tuesday the 14th of October. This is a significant area of low pressure right here. Big dip in the jet. There's your area of low pressure. I mean, we're probably talking two to three standard deviations below that 20-year norm right here. What this low represents, colder than normal temperatures, probably 10, 10 12, 13, 14, 15, somewhere in there, um, and widespread snow. If this, if this pattern verifies widespread snow potentially all the way down to the valley floors and boy you can really see it here this is the eight day snow forecast so this accounts for both storm systems the first one uh, with Priscilla and then the second one that really significant area of low pressure and you can see the damage it does we're talking about snow way down low I mean there's a lot of snow anywhere you see that pink shading or purple that's at least six inches. That's generally six inches or more. And that's a lot of Colorado. That's Wyoming. That's Montana. That's Idaho. That's Utah. That's Nevada. That's the High Sierra. That's Washington and Oregon. Uh, all the way up into parts of BC and Alberta. I mean, that's a lot of, that's, that's you know, a ton of the West at that point um, on that eight day snow forecast. Um, in one place, that uh, you can really see it snow all the way down into the town of Jackson, Wyoming. This is that extended snow forecast is only up 
with the snow numbers after about October 12th. This runs us all the way out to October 22nd. The ensemble mean takes us out to about six inches of accumulation, but some of these error bars here, you can see them are up at around a foot at that point. So it's definitely cold enough to snow all the way down into the town of Jackson, and that's very representative of what we're going to see across a lot of the Intermountain West. Zoom again. Uh, so this uh, gives you some depiction of what to expect for uh, most of Wyoming, a lot of Utah, Colorado, Idaho, and even parts of Montana. Again, where you see these pink and purples, that's six inches or more. And where you see those bright uh, purples over the Tetons, uh, the Wind Rivers, all the way up into Yellowstone, e even out here into parts of eastern Wyoming, I mean, that's over. That's six to 12 inches plus in some of these areas. Look at the, uh, the Wasatch. If this verifies, I mean, we're talking six to 12 plus. Down there, the uh, the high Uintas, the Ochres. I mean, we're, we're looking at all those places, you know, well over six inches of snow accumulation. You can see it happening there in Colorado. Um, I'll, I'll widen the view on Colorado here in a, in a sec, but, I mean, you're looking at all those pinks and purples. That's over six inches of accumulation. You've got it over parts of Idaho. You've got it over parts of southwest Montana, up there around Big Sky. So that's, that's a pretty uh, good-looking snow forecast. Now, here's Utah, all of Utah. Again, really good stuff here for the Wasatch Front, the high Uintas, and even snow trickling all the way down towards Bryan Head in the forecast. Nevada's got snow. There's western Colorado over the flat tops, the Uncompahgre uh, uh, wilderness there, and southwest Colorado. We'll take a closer look at that as well here. Um, let me zoom in on Colorado, um, but there you go. I mean, there's snow for all of the zones in Colorado. No, no snow here just yet for the lower elevations of Colorado down around Denver, but that's a pretty good snow over the high. Uh, that's over six inches for a lot of the highest peaks in, in Colorado from this. So we're looking really good here in the extended forecast. Um, let me go back to the. Uh, let me go back to that eight-day snow forecast. I mean. That's a lot of snow again. It, it really is dependent on getting both of the storm systems um, that I was talking about there in the extended forecast, especially that second one, because that's the one that really brings the colder air in and pushes that rain snow line all the way down to the valley floors in a lot of areas. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this, uh, this mountain weather update here um, on this Tuesday. Always appreciate you tuning in here. Take care and have a great day.